AI progress has been uh, accelerating in the past few years, as uh, you have heard from uh, Joshua's talk earlier. And there are many uh, exciting and difficult challenges um, that arise with uh, increasing AI capabilities. From figuring out how to specify the complexity of human values to machines, uh, to questions of policy and governance and how to help our policymakers uh, manage the societal impacts of AI. And the good news is that it's not too early to work on these problems now. And in fact, we have many awesome people who are working on these problems, who are actually uh, right here in this audi audience. Uh, FLI has uh, funded um, 37 projects in AI safety, and uh, many of those researchers have presented uh, their work uh, at the workshop uh, that preceded this conference. Uh, and over the next 20 minutes, I'll talk about some um, overall themes in this work and all the really awesome progress um, that our researchers have made. We'll start with uh, big question of value learning. How do we specify uh, complicated and sometimes contradictory uh, human values to machines? Um, the question of what happens uh, if you don't do a good job of specifying what you want uh, has been extensively explored in fiction uh, from uh, ancient fables like King Midas uh, to Sorcerer's Apprentice. And uh, we all know what happened when uh, King Midas asked for everything he touched to turn to gold. Uh, he got exactly what he asked for, but not what he wanted. Uh, and our researchers have some answers to uh, how to prevent this kind of thing with our AI systems. Uh, some of our researchers approach um, the question of value learning uh, through human feedback. As you've earlier heard from Stuart Russell, uh, one approach is uh, to teach the agent by demonstrating human actions, what a human would do in a given situation. Um, and the cooperative part of um, the inverse reinforcement learning method for this uh, is that we don't just uh, show uh, the agent how a human would make coffee perfectly, uh, but we actually teach the agent how to make coffee. Owen Evans would point out that uh, human actions are often kind of inconsistent and suboptimal, and that makes them more difficult to learn from. Uh, so uh, he works on modifying inverse reinforcement learning uh, to account for these human inconsistencies and biases. Paul Cristiano, on the other hand, would say that you know, human feedback is great, but we don't want to be uh, giving our artificial agents uh, feedback every five seconds and having them ask, well, is it okay to do this? Is it okay to do that every five seconds? So we want, we want them to make use of human feedback uh, much more efficiently. Um, and that uh, goes into the question of uh, how to make AI control scalable. Uh, and his approach to this is uh, semi-supervised learning. Another cluster of researchers um, address the question of value learning uh, through building in moral concepts directly. Francesca Rossi, uh, works on um, specifying ethical laws through various sorts of constraints that depend on the context that the agent is in. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, Vincent Conitzer looks for patterns in human decision making. Uh, for example, we can give uh, humans various sorts of scenarios uh, and ask them to rate like how moral the action in question was. Like, uh, suppose uh, 
a woman threw a stapler at someone in the audience when they were snoring uh, while she was giving a talk. Is that, like, how okay is this? How moral is this? <laughs> and uh, uh, we can have a whole bunch of uh, scenarios like this and have sort of human um, ratings for, for these actions. And uh, from this, we can uh, figure out some relevant features that we can build into AI systems. And Adrian Weller asks, to what extent we can make these moral concepts that humans have more precise and consistent even before uh, we build them into AI systems? Because there's a, a lot of these uh, inconsistencies that come up uh, when we start trying to uh, specify uh, things like morality precisely. For example, what the, uh, the concept of fairness means to me might mean something very different to every single one of you. And we need to make that more precise. Another big challenge in AI safety is robust self-modification for AI systems. How can, how can our AI systems uh, improve themselves and modify themselves while retaining various safety properties that we care about. In other words, how can we prevent Dr. Jekyll from turning into Mr. Hyde? Ramana Kumar um, approaches this question um, using formal verification. Um, he looks at the challenges of uh, self-referential reasoning when agents try to prove that uh, they or the future successor agents uh, will do the right thing. And you run into all sorts of logical paradoxes like the liar's paradox, like this sentence is false. Um, when, you, when trying to uh, do these kind of proofs. On the other hand, um, Bas Teunerbrink takes a more empirical approach. Uh, and he thinks about uh, how we can get our AI systems to modify themselves very gradually and test those modifications extensively. Uh, so we really don't want to let Dr. Jekyll take a large swig of potion and turn into Mr. Hyde because that would be a large modification. We want to only make small modifications to um, make the self-modification of the agent more bounded. Anomaly detection is another uh, big challenge in AI safety. How can we uh, have our AI systems recognize when they are outside of the regime in which they were trained and generalize appropriately and conservatively from their past experience? In other words, how can um, artificial agents uh, AI systems act uh, reasonably in the presence of unknown unknowns. And I'm borrowing an example here from uh, Percy Liang, uh, where your training data uh, is something like a house, but your test data could be something like a skyscraper. So Percy's work uh, helps the AI systems make good predictions even without uh, making any strong assumptions about uh, where the test data comes from. Uh, and Tom Dieterich um, thinks about uh, how to get a part of the system uh, monitor uh, the rest of the system and notice when, uh, when the system is extrapolating and when it is outside its training data. On the other hand, uh, Fushin Li cautions us that we should never do extrapolation, because extrapolation is uh, fairly risky. And we should, in fact, um, look at our data and be able to test whether uh, it's just a normal data point or an adversarial data point. And, uh, 
Brian Zibart agrees with Fushin about the virtues of being pessimistic and thinking about adversarial scenarios. Uh, and he asks, what is the worst case that for what the test data could be like that's still like, uh, reasonably consistent with the training data? Last but certainly not least, um, there are the questions of uh, how we can help our policymakers um, manage uh, the increasingly tricky societal impacts of AI. Heather Roth emphasizes the importance of meaningful human control of autonomous weapons. And she thinks about how to define this concept, uh, both on the tactical, and operational, and the strategic level. Peter Asaro uh, thinks about autonomous weapons from the perspective of liability. And he asks who is responsible for their actions, and what do we even mean by things like autonomy and agency. These are all concepts that can be fairly difficult to pin down. Moshe Vardy uh, focuses on the issue of job automation that you uh, heard about from uh, Eric's talk earlier, uh, and he is uh, organizing an event uh, in Washington, D.C. that will bring together various key stakeholders uh, to help the government uh, respond to this challenge. And Nick Bostrom uh, takes a more general view of policy, and he thinks about uh, what are the uh, relevant desiderata uh, as we transition into an era of machine intelligence, uh, such as uh, how, how do we uh, enable global coordination and how do we make sure that uh, AI uh, really benefits everyone. These uh, research themes that I just talked about um, are only part of the work of our grantees. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have uh, time to talk about the amazing work of uh, the, rest, um, the, the rest of our researchers. And this is all part of uh, this uh, vast landscape of AI safety research. Um, so actually, um, Richard from FLI has put together this really cool map of uh, AI safety topics and how they relate to each other. Uh, which you can, uh, I encourage you to play around with at uh, futureoflab.org slash landscape. And I think this uh, really shows how much more uh, there still remains to be done, uh, even given all the progress we've made so far. There is uh, a growing community of researchers uh, who are working on all these problems. Uh, and this community spans both academia and industry and independent researchers. And many of those teams that are here on the slide didn't really exist two years ago. So this community has really been uh, expanding dramatically uh, since Puerto Rico. Uh, and that has been really inspiring. I would like... Uh, all the FLI researchers uh, who are here in the audience to please stand up and, uh, and wave and make yourself known. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for the really amazing work that you've been doing the past couple of years. 